Hello everybody, I'm Brendan Schmidt. I want to thank you for being here. This is my project, SPAM. Uh, SPAM is a spring power assist motor. So I want to ask you a question. Um, when you guys think of green energy, green transportation, uh, what's one of the first sources of energy do you think of? Solar. Solar. In transportation. Oh, gotcha. Well, I mean, what I'm leaning towards is uh, is uh, a lot of people consider electricity as the, the uh, premier source of, of green transportation. So um, my project, what I want to do is just kind of put in people's minds just to consider, well, where did that energy really come from? And so we know from a lot of conservation, a lot of energy that, that really you just doesn't come out of nothing. You have to have something. So according to the Department of Energy, uh, most of our Electricity is made, 45% uh, of it is made from fossil fuels and petroleum. So if we're going to really start to go green, I just want to consider that we could go even further and not go with electricity, even in transportation. So my problem statement is how to store energy lost during braking or downhill and return to the wheel without the use of batteries, gas, or chemicals. So a completely mechanical uh, system. So here's a couple of, of systems out there. And so we have regenerative braking. Um, here, here Mazda uses a, a capacitor because batteries are inefficient in the chemical process. The chemical change uh, loses a lot of energy. This is uh, Ford's uh, hydraulic launch assist built by Eaton. Uh, yeah, I just like that truck. <laughs> um, there's kinetic energy recovery systems, and so um, Formula One uses a flywheel system uh, um, introduced in 2009 skip 2010 and then it brought it back in 2011. And then uh, here's a student made a flywheel bike out in New York. So that kind of inspired me a little bit. So similar comparison. So how many of you guys remember having a little toy car that you pull back and then spring forward? So a couple of people or you can wind them up. So that was the inspiration of my project. Was, uh, and in fact, I really wanted to put it on a scooter, but uh, it really didn't seem real possible. So my solutions are to build a mechanical device that stores energy, build a, a, a device that returns the energy, and so I came up with the spring power system. So some of my design requirements were that the motor needed to store about 3,500 uh, pounds foot, so potential energy, that would be about a 14 foot hill of a normal city block. And then it also needed to be charged by the bicycle or the rider, it needed to weigh less than 50 pounds, I wasn't sure why I said that. And then it must be aesthetically appealing. So it's got to look good for people to want to use it. And it must be adaptable to a variety of bike strikes and recumbents. So some of the methods I used were from the project, uh, project management principles um, involving risk assessment, scheduling, and budgeting. The methods I used were uh, some of the engineering principles we learned here right at the school. So uh, potential energy, Hooke's law, Spring potential energy, uh, K, have one half K, X squared, uh, static dynamics, and, and some of the machine principles as well. Um, in the shop, I, or also I got to use uh, um, design software, SolidWorks, uh, MasterCam, build the machine parts and uh, the machine as well. So this gets us to the heart of the matter. Um, really, what am I going to store that energy into? And I talked about springs. And so, it's, it's, so some of the springs that I really considered were um, continuous um, springs that were kind of clock wind-up springs. And, and as, I, as I saw that design unfold, it was, it was, I was realizing that was going to be big and bulky and, and not a lot of displacement. So I um, came up with compression springs. It's been 16 inches long, 4 inches in diameter, the 0.562 wire um, has a K value of 330 pounds per inch. And the thing that really got me on it was, was the solid height, basically the displacement. I wanted displacement because I needed energy, but I also needed displacement for how much it's going to even push or accelerate on the bike. All that's translated through a ball screw. So in the center section of the shaft are the ball screws um, and the ball nut assembly. And so the, the compression spring, uh, acting in a linear fashion, the ball screws translate that to a rotation motion. So a lot of uh, the machine tools that I got to use this year uh, were new to me and very fun. So this one I spent most of my time on is the 
pasta is the filling layer. Um, uh, I, I want to take it home with me uh, when I'm done, but uh, I don't think Professor Pringle will allow it. If you can carry it, you can take it. Value it with me. I see it's uh, knee mill as well. Uh, that's the that's the uh, brake motor hub. Um, I spent some time over on the vertical knee mill as well, and a lot of time on the, the CNC vertical mill machine. So some of some of my requirements too was that I didn't want to actually cut up a bike. So I wanted it to be something that's modular, very adaptable to anybody's bike. If you were to buy it, you'd take about medium technical expertise to be able to um, install it. Here, um, I just want to kind of show a little bit of how, how long it took. It took about 300 shop hours, and that's between me and uh, I decided that I knew I was going to need some help. I knew I needed to find people that were smarter than me, and there's a lot of them around here. So thanks to Chris Portella, Ted Bramble, uh, Matt Ruby. Here, uh, uh, Professor Pringle is kind of watching over me, making sure I don't hurt anything. So these springs have sat at a free length of 32 inches, but my tubes were 30. And then the ball that assembly was about two inches as well. So they were going to be preloaded at about four inches, four times three, 30, it was close to 1,400 pounds. So um, it, was, it was really difficult to find something that was going to be able to do this, to compress it, get everything inside and get the screws on. So uh, Professor Kaplan came up with the idea, how about we use the drill press? And so um, even though it worked, it was still real scary, and I think there's beads of sweat coming down with Professor Brinkley's report. <laughs> so some of my predictions um, have to do with uh, spring potential energy. Um, and so I calculated that I would have about 3,900 uh, foot-pounds at 75% compression, about 12 inches of, of compression. Um, and that goes up considerably for two more inches at 88% compression, 7,300 uh, pounds of speed. And uh, torque was really important to me because if you're gonna put something on your bike, um, it needs to be able to propel you. And so if it, if it doesn't, then what's the point? So I calculated uh, with, a, with a two to one uh, train value, about 26 foot pounds um, to the tire. And that was about 100% compression. So I was kind of hoping that I could do that. And I was really hoping that I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so does it work? Brian helped with testing, Chris made parts, Ted made parts, and John helped, he made parts too. So with the testing, um, I needed to know a few, few things about it. I needed to be able to find out what the power was and, and, and what that was based on basic his time. And so um, I, I did some poking around and found out that the school actually has basically a bicycle dynamo. We could, we could measure all of Once I found out, um, I buttered up to them as best I could. So Brian Contreras is the technician over at Fitness Science, and uh, he showed me the CompuTrainer 1.6 CF software. It's actually coaching software that, that you can set the parameters and train bicycle riders. Well, we used it in reverse, and we were able to use, we, we found the time, speed, and power. And thanks to Josh as well. He really helped out with the testing. Um, also on there, was that you could set a course for um, what kind of load it's going to put against you. So we selected a flat course. Um, later, 
probably just recently, a week ago, we realized, gosh, we could have set a course. Um, Josh suggested the Matterhorn. It had all sorts of courses in there for cycles. So unfortunately, I missed out on that opportunity. The thing doesn't work, so I can't test it anymore. Um, here's the results. Uh, second year, I like to show this first because it's got the most torque, and so it shows the very best numbers. Um, you'll see that I have a, a peak uh, average of about 250 watts. Uh, it's about a third of the horsepower. Um, I'm happy with that number. Um, and that's at 88% uh, compression. So there's still another two inches left to compress. And um, you can spring potential energy, when you, uh, that two inches, that last two inches is really huge. Uh, I calculated it out to be about 12,000 foot pounds. It's still there. That I was just a little bit nervous to try to test. Uh, fourth gear results are going to be lower, 92 uh, watts peak average. And then here's some my torque values. I took the power and then I divided it by the by the duration, of, uh, by the, the time intervals. And uh, it kind of showed up funny. I had this real solid bar, you know, line that looks looks good. And then I got the scattered um, numbers that kind of peak up. And, and I think I really think that was the, the kind of the motion, the inefficiency, and the movements of everything kind of grinding, moving. And, uh, you can see that it was pretty loud at the, at the discharge. Uh, fourth gear um, hit around, I, I, I wanted to use the upper range because I still felt like it gave a sample of the torque, so we're looking at about eight foot pounds. So in my evaluation span stores 3,500 uh, foot pounds of spring energy. I proved that. Um, the spam is charged by the rider or the bike. I proved that. And the spam weighs under 50 pounds. No, it's 104 pounds, but I tried. <laughs> and uh, the spam looks cool. And uh, what did you say now it looks like? Looks like a rocket. Looks like a rocket. <laughs> That's right. Everybody wonders if it's turbos. And no, it's not as cool as turbos or rockets. I really wish it was. But, but uh, you know, I, I think it came out of steady with you. And then, um, Completely modular, it can make the bike's tricycle incumbents. Well, I made it so that it, I didn't cut up this bike, but I, I did not prove that I could made it to tricycle or recumbent. But I really believe that I could even put a bigger fan motor on the difference of the recumbent. So, uh, and then the torque of 26 foot pounds, I did not prove that, but I really believe that if I if I considered more of the efficiency of every component, I believe I could increase that to. Um, this, I really wanted to show this too. This, um, in earlier testing, uh, I, I, I had a kind of, a, uh, there's a, there's a drivetrain chain on the side there and it, and it really bounced up against the, uh, the main, the brackets of the motor itself. And so it was, it was loose, but it was, it was grinding. And so, um, I, I, I got a couple of tests before it broke. And so this is the fourth gear test with that in mind, these tests, where I got the bulk of my test, are are with some UHMW, um, um, I, I just put those in there to kind of give it some tension and to keep it from grinding against the metal. I believe it created a lot of friction, so I just wanted to show the difference in that. And uh, so, uh, previous tests would have been a 27% increase, and these results were 8 So I, I believe it could have it changed in efficiency at 30 